speaking at Lifestyle Christianity University tomorrow, and on the plane, I read a phrase from T. Austin Sparks that made my heart just jump. He said that in the midst of ministry, he, quote, felt the beauty of the Lord. Felt the beauty of the Lord. To me, this is the highest thing. This is what I desire to experience, and this is what I desire to bring other people into. The feeling of the beauty of the Lord. Literally, that undeniable, tangible reality of Jesus. He is perfect in every way, and that His beauty is greater than anything else in this world. It is dazzling and beyond compare, and it is the key to holiness. It is the key to purity. It's the key to joy and peace. It is the beauty of the Lord. And I pray that what God would release in your life is the feeling, the sense, the seeing, the tangibility, the reality of the beauty of Jesus. <laughs> There's ice on the car this morning. This doesn't happen in Florida. Discipleship is not a program. Discipleship is a family of believers where people can come and actually belong in a place. And so we've baptized in the last eight, eight weeks close to 40, probably 43 people. And when they come up out of the water, they're healed. They're um, not they're not just healed They're and they, they begin to pray in the Holy Spirit immediately. So this last week, four people were born again. Four people came to be a water baptized. So we ended up baptizing eight people all of them that night spoke in tongues, uh, were given a discipleship book and are gonna to begin to walk through discipleship this week. So I have a strong conviction that when a person makes a decision for Jesus that they should be discipled, they should be water baptized, they should be spirit filled, and they should be in the word within a week. Why wait a month? Why wait two months? So we've truly been seeing at Lifestyle Christianity revival in a coffee shop. It's not a service, it's family. medicine, high dosage. Um, doctor said that uh, it would take me, when I encountered the Lord and, and went to the doctor, the doctor said it would take me a year to come off of my medicines because of the high dosage that I was on. And doctors had claimed that I was uh, alcohol dependent. And in two months, I was completely set free from every addiction and all my medicine, I was off completely within two months, completely free and uh, just uh, spirit filled, praying in the spirit and uh, walking with Jesus in power. Okay, so now I'm back at the room. These guys want to hoop with me. So I brought my clothes, and we're going to go hoop. I don't play anymore, so I'm probably going to be embarrassed. Hebrews chapter 1 tells us that God has spoken, past tense, completely in Jesus. God has appointed Jesus heir of everything. There's nothing else to inherit. He's inherited it all. God made the world through Jesus. Jesus is the radiance of God's glory. In other words, the only expression of the person of God. Jesus is the exact representation of his actual nature. Jesus upholds all things by the power of his word. Jesus purged sin. Jesus sits at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus is better than the angels. He's got a greater name than the angels. Jesus is called the Son. God will bring Jesus back into the world and all the angels will worship him. Jesus has a scepter of righteousness and his throne will last forever and ever. Jesus is the anointed with joy above every other person. Jesus laid the foundations of the earth. He will 
change out the heavens like a garment, though he himself will never change. God is making all of his enemies come to the feet of Jesus. All this is said in chapter one. And then the first verse of chapter two says this, we must pay much closer attention, dot, 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 so that we do not drift away. It hit me like a ton of bricks. If a man slips away from God, it's because his attention left Jesus, the full, perfect, spotless, radiant Son of God has got to have all of our attention. And even in these days, much closer attention. I encourage you, wherever you are in your life, turn your attention, your affection, your heart, your will, everything towards the person of Jesus Christ, the Son of Man Himself. Let Him captivate you. Let Him have everything that, you, that your life consists of, everything that's on the inside of you. This is what will keep you. As a matter of fact, I, will, I promise you this, or I predict this. If you take your eyes off of Jesus and put them on some other person or some other thing, what will happen is you will surely drift away. Let us pay much closer attention so that we do not drift away. Let us stay near Him so we can hear Him and enjoy Him and be satisfied with Him. I wrote this poem uh, this morning. Oh boy. My bridegroom king, in you is everything. My bridegroom love, who came from above. My bridegroom friend, faithful to the end. My bridegroom, from whom all things come. Something happens when I worship your name. Something I could never explain. My love, my love, worthy of all love. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, Jesus speaks to us about prayer. He says, when you pray, go into your most private room and closing the door, pray to your Father who sees in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you in the open. This actual text is what the entire course is going to be driving home. We must spend time with God. We're going to talk practically about how to experience Him, experiencing and enjoying God from the scriptures. Thank you so much for signing up. I know the Lord is going to do something incredible in your life.